The following announcement has been paid for by Pro Wrestling Culture. Dummy! Yeah! Yeah! Be watching there. It's going to be showtime. And tune in to the podcast, Pro Wrestling Culture, because it's always showtime there. From the Stinger. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, a new brand episode of Pro Wrestling Culture. My name is Aldo Fiadone, and uh, this is Alan Mack, my special friend and partner for the evening. Hi, Alan. Thank you for the friend. Eh? <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's damn true. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, our special guest for this special episode, this is James Mason. I'm James. How are we doing? I'm very good. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all well. Nice to speak with you all. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So, James, uh, my first question is, uh, um, tell us uh, anything about uh, the beginnings, the first part of your career and uh, uh, for uh, your run in the European wrestling, the evolution of European wrestling during uh, your time in the ring? So it started for me, it was around about 1987 was when I went to see my first ever wrestling show. And I feel from that moment on when I was just hooked. There was a, a, a famous wrestler, Big Daddy was there as the main event. And once I'd seen Big Daddy and the other guys that was on, I was just hooked on British wrestling. And uh, I was tunnel visioned. It was all I ever wanted to do. I started doing amateur wrestling from the age of uh, 11 which was in about 91. And then at 1993, I was uh, able to help uh, one of the referees set up the ring. And it all sort of went from there. I've seemed to have a full-time job in pro wrestling from July 1994. So I've been, been very, very lucky for me. So you, you've wrestled in, in many countries, in many companies. And I think uh, uh, your first uh, big appearance was in TNA in 2004 for the American X Cup uh, uh, tournament. Uh, so, um, what do you think about uh, that time for you in particular and uh, uh, the TNA wrestling because uh, they changed many things during the years, during uh, their 21 plus years? Uh, I think for me, with the TNA appearance I did, that was a big eye opener for me because I was so, like I say, tunnel vision with British wrestling. I just wanted to be a British wrestler. I didn't really give much attention to wrestling around the world. And we got an opportunity to go to TNA. And then all of a sudden I realized there was a whole nother world of wrestling. I knew it existed, but I knew very little knowledge of it. And then once I went to TNA, it just opened my eyes to a whole nother side of wrestling, as in TV wrestling, as in the glitz and the glamour side of wrestling. I obviously knew it existed, but seeing it at first hand with TNA, it was a, a big, big eye opener for me. And then just realizing that there was a whole new world of wrestling that I wasn't familiar with. So it was, a, it was a big opportunity for me. Did I make the most of it? And could I have made more of it? Yes, I could have made a lot more of it. I just didn't realise what we was going to do. I thought I was just taking another book in, which I do every day, and not realising this could have led to all sorts and could have been a life-changing opportunity. So I felt I went there just with the attitude that I'm going to enjoy myself and see see what there is. And uh, I should have took a lot more. Uh, I should have took it a lot more serious. And I think all the guys that went with us all feel the same. And uh, four years later, uh, you've wrestled a match during the uh, television tappings of SmackDown in Manchester, uh, in, in England. Uh, and uh, you defeated MVP, Montel Montelius Porter. So 
an important match, an important win, win, and uh, most importantly, an important time for your career. Uh, what do you think about that? And uh, why your uh, uh, your road in uh, WWE uh, didn't work again? Uh, again, it was something that I never really pushed to be involved in. We, we used to go to as extras. We was all lucky enough to get a job to be as extras with very little hope or expectance of actually wrestling. And it was just if they needed people to be involved in matches. And I was very lucky that day to do that match. It was one of the, the biggest sort of moments of my life, really. But I, I never did it to try and get to another level with WE. I was, I was still at a stage where I was very happy just wrestling in England. I was still working full time still wrestling all over Europe. I was still very busy. So again, it was another one of those opportunities. I could have really pushed it. I could have made a bigger thing of it. But again, with my career, I've just been, as long as I'm wrestling every weekend and every week, I've always been happy. But again, it's another one of those moments where I could have pushed it and who knows where I could have got to after that and what more could have come of it. It's just something, again, I've, I never pushed. And maybe in 20 years time when I'm not wrestling no more, I may regret these moments of not pushing it further but it was a great opportunity again I should have made a bigger thing of it I should have pushed it and tried to push it further but I was just very happy at the time to get the opportunity so and uh, in England obviously in uh, in UK uh, so after uh, all uh, all of you did you you are a pioneer for England wrestling And uh, uh, USA also in uh, Rev Pro, Revolution Pro Wrestling. I remember a match uh, uh, between you and Zack Sabre Jr. for the British Undisputed Championship uh, in 2019. Uh, and you wrestled uh, Curtis Chapman, uh, Gabriel Kidd, uh, another uh, big talent for Rev Pro and the European scenario. Uh, so what is the, the mantra for... Uh, for England wrestling, in particular for companies like Rev Pro, Progress, that uh, evolved their, their business day by day and uh, survived from, uh, from COVID era? Uh, I think it, it's a bit, uh, it's not the, the normal type of shows I wrestle on. I'm, I'm happy to wrestle on any shows and I'm, I think it's amazing what those sort of companies do, but then not my my main uh, earnings where I make my living through wrestling. So it, it's, again, it's a new sort of side of wrestling that I have very little dealings with, but I'm just very blessed that when I have got any involvement in, especially Rev Pro and companies like that, they let me be me. They let me wrestle guys that I can still be me. I can still do my British style. And I think because of the types of show they are, the British style still works very well. It has a very good hardcore following that want to see the new up and coming wrestlers. They want to see every type of match going, but they still appreciate good British British wrestling, which is, is great to see. So I'm very blessed that they give me an opportunity to, to do what I do on those shows. And I think during COVID, they, they were the companies that kept kept going. Somehow they just seem to, to stay afloat, keep going. And from what I gather now, these companies are going from strength to strength. And they're a great example of keeping British wrestling on the map. As I said before, there's not all of it is prime British wrestling that I was grew up on, but they certainly still respect their heritage and they certainly still touch on those sort of moments in their shows and whenever I'm involved, it's uh, it's great for me to still have a, have a place on those type of shows. The next step is uh, Italy, Italian wrestling, premium, champ premium championship wrestling. Uh, you will have a seminar uh, for premium and uh, dream wrestling. And uh, uh, the next October, uh, for, uh, 15 October. 15th of October, Sunday. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You will have uh, an appearance for uh, for this show. Uh, what do you feel about it? Well, firstly, I'm very happy to be coming back to Italy. I, I've been lucky to wrestle all over the world during my career, but I've only been to Italy once, and I had an amazing time. I love the, the the city I was staying in. I love the country. I love the people. It was just a really amazing place. I always say it was the only place I've ever been in the world where I just wish I was there with with my wife and my family. It's just it was such a lovely place. So I'm, I'm over, overwhelmed to be going back there. I've actually got two trips coming up to Italy, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and from what I gather, the opponent I'm, I'm wrestling that night is, is a perfect opponent for me. He's someone who understands the wrestling I do. He's someone who I've asked around and he's got a very good name. 
Uh, and yeah, it's just great to have an opportunity again to, to go to Italy and especially to make a training seminar as well. That's, that's somewhere where I really uh, like to think I excel in. It's something that I, like, I really enjoy doing there. I feel like what I do is a little different than some other people. So it's a great thing to, to go to places in Europe, especially Italy, and to provide something that I believe that not many other people in the world are providing right now. So yeah, I'm really excited to be going and very much looking forward to it. Alan, your tour. Yeah, speaking of your uh, one and only appearance uh, for the moment uh, in Italy, it was for the um, SIW, then it was called uh, the Scuola Italiana Wrestling. Now it has, has become uh, Superior Italian Wrestling. Uh, your opponent at that time was uh, Fabio Ferrari. And what I'm curious about is your opinion on uh, your uh, opponent, um, on Fabio. Uh, I think it's no secret about Fabio. I've spoke very highly about Fabio Ferrari uh, over the last, last few years. Uh, someone that I wrestled quite a bit in England. I was very lucky to wrestle him in Germany, a country that I, I love wrestling and to wrestle Fabio there. He's another guy that I think got my style. I certainly understood his style. And uh, I mean, maybe I'm saying too much, but you, you can gel with certain people. You can wrestle certain people and it works. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the reason behind it is, but it just works. And he was one of the guys that I, I, I enjoyed wrestling. I didn't always win. It wasn't always easy, but it was just something that connected between myself and Fabio Ferrari. It was, uh, yeah, maybe the character. Maybe it acted well with my character. Uh, he was just a great opponent to have. So obviously from my first appearance there to wrestle him in, a, in an audience that I feel got what I did, they understood what he did. It just meant that we could make a match that was very different than the rest of the matches on that particular show. So it, it helped me stand out a bit. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great opponent for me there. Great. Um, Aldo, if it's not a problem for you, my next question, I will, will save it for last Absolutely. because it's about you... uh, the next uh, event uh, in, uh, in premium. Absolutely. The, the stand is yours. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, about the next opponent and uh, uh, um, What do you expect from uh, your match in premium, the reaction of Italian fans about uh, uh, your figure? Well, I, I, I certainly expect to win the match. I never go into a match expecting to lose. I don't always win. <laughs> I lose quite a lot now as I'm getting older, but I still expect to win and I'm going to be going out with every, every bit of me that, that's going to win. Uh, as for the reaction from the fans, I... I'm, I feel I'm very good at uh, engaging with an audience. If an audience is reacting to one thing, I can work on that. If they're not going out to, to give an reaction and audience participation, if the audience get into the match, regardless if this move is hit or that finish is done or the, the story is there, as long as there is reaction, uh, I feel that is a good match for me. I, I do a lot of live wrestling opposed to TV wrestling. So when I make a live show, it is all about the audience and the reaction from the fans on that evening. So my whole engagement on that night is obviously to win, but ultimately I, I want the, the crowd to be engaged. I want them to enjoy what I do and I want them to see something different that they're not going to see from the rest of the matches on the show. I, I feel like a lot of shows at the moment, there's a lot of matches that are maybe a little bit staged or maybe a little bit set up. And I think after a certain amount of time, the audience can, can see through stuff. So I want to be the match on that evening that, The audience don't know what's going to happen, that they are sort of sitting on the edge of the seats and they're not quite sure what it's going to be. And that's the way I try and engage with an audience is I want my match to be different than, than the rest of the show. And that's, uh, I'm not saying it's going to be the most exciting, it's not going to be the big high flying match, or, but I'm going to make sure that my match is very entertaining and very different than every other match on the show. That's, that's what I try and promise when I take a book. And, and, and your, opponent, your opponent is a, is a, a, a real, real. Uh, opponent because he is Rocky Laurita. Uh, mm. uh, have, have, have some name, have some talent here in, here in Italy. I think uh, uh, that will be a huge match between you two. Well, any guy with the name of Rocky, that's, that's going to be a great opponent for me. What a, that's, a, that's a great wrestling name. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the match just for that reason alone. But I, I've asked some, some other Colleagues, I've got some other wrestlers from Italy. They've given me their opinion on Rocky, and it's all good. Everyone said he's a good opponent for me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to the match. 
and I will be looking at the front row. I will be there. Alan? Uh, I will I will look out for you and I will shake your hand and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you'll be on my side. Um, can I can I do my last question, Aldo? If you have... yeah yeah no problem oh, right no problem um, damn I forgot it uh, <laughs> I had it here I forgot completely forgot. It. Um, <laughs> Ah, yeah, um, there's no rush <laughs> okay um <laughs> we saw um i had the uh, rocky uh on my podcast i we did an interview together with him and uh, we asked uh, a lot about the the first show the premium cup and the extra match that is uh, uh mason versus uh, laurita um but there is one particular um character it's called it's called mr x and probably is going to uh, do something during the Premium Cup. Do you fear that something might happen with uh, this guy, this this entity, because we don't know who, who this guy is? Like the road general manager. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I do fear now. And I didn't five minutes ago. I was not aware of Mr. X. Uh, we used to have a Mr. X in this country, in England, that, uh, that always used to cause problems. So I'm... I feel like now you've given me a, a little heads up. You've given me, you've made me prepare for this match completely differently. Uh, yeah, bring it on, Mr. X. I don't know who you are, what you're doing, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready for you. And let's, let's see what happens. You've made this match very interesting now. Nice. And uh, so guys, one last thing. One last thing. One last thing. One, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, no, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Bye. 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 Uh, since um, uh, Rocky did the challenge on my podcast first, uh, um, Do you have some less words from uh, for your opponent? Ah, uh, see, this is where I don't uh, excel in the. Uh, I'm going to do this, this battle, and I'm going to do that. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. All I think Rocky needs to do is turn up with an open mind, be ready because anything and everything could happen. It might not, but it could be. That's all I'd say. Just be prepared because I've been doing this a long, long time. I've wrestled some of the, the absolute best. I mean, the best in the world. I've been so blessed in some of the people I've wrestled. Have I beat them? Probably not. But have I given them a real good battle? Yes, every single time. So regardless if I win, lose or draw, this is going to be a match that Rocky's going to remember. Thank you very much, Mr. Mason. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is the match. This is the event. This is the show premium championship wrestling. James Mason against Rocky Laurita. Be there, guys. Be there and be sure to check out the premium championship wrestling. James, Thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you very much for this opportunity, this interview. My pleasure. Uh, lovely talking to you both. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, too. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me there, Aldo. Thank you very much. This is our project. Absolutely. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't invite anyone. <laughs> this is our project. So, thank you once again, Alan. Thank you, James. And see you pleasure. in Premium Championship Wrestling. Bye. I look forward to it. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.